Hey there, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware. You know, computer-aided design and manufacturing technologies have been around for ages, but recent advancements in 3D printing technologies have brought industrial strength CAD CAM capabilities down to the mainstream consumer. For as little as a few hundred dollars, you can own a 3D printer capable of taking your creative vision to life in plastic via apps like SketchUp, FreeCAD, and Autodesk. There's even an online database called Thingiverse of 3D objects that people upload to share with the world. 3D printing is an exploding, amazing market. So we figured we'd round up a few of the more popular 3D printers on the market to show you what they're all about and give you a sense of the technology in action. We've got machines from Solidoodle, the Solidoodle 2 is here. The uh, Cube 3D from 3D Systems is here. And right next to me is the Up Mini from Delta Micro Corp. Let's take a look around these machines and show you what they're all about. All right, so all the printers we'll be taking a look at here today are filament extruder based designs that use ABS or PLA filament based plastic. As you can see here, it looks a lot like Weed Whacker line. This is the Up Mini by PP3DP and the US based distributor here is Up3DUSA.com. The company is X Object Inc. The printer itself retails for $8.99 with a number of accessories. So let's take a look. Now with the Up Mini, you get a number of tools and accessories included with the printer. The company actually includes a pair of work gloves, believe it or not. You get a sharp pair of snips for cutting away the breakaway support material of your model, as well as an X-Acto knife, a little bag of Allen wrenches and other odds and ends. You get a putty knife and a pair of tweezers. The machine measures 9.5 inches wide by roughly 13.75 inches deep and 13.75 inches tall or so. And it's not a very big machine, it sits squarely on your desktop um, and weighs about 13 pounds. All right, so inside the Up Mini is where all the magic happens. It has a 120 millimeter cubed print bed right there. And that's about 4.72 inches to be exact for width, depth, and height of the model you'll be printing. Layer thickness on the print is 0.2 to 0.35 millimeters or 200 microns or to 350 microns in terms of the layer thickness or pitch of the resolution that it can print to. Uh, print speed is 10 to 100 centimeters cubed per hour. Uh, on fine, it's about 10 centimeters cubed per hour, 100 centimeters cubed per hour on fast mode. And the print head is right up top here. And again, the print bed is down the bottom. And on the back side of the Up Mini, you'll see the filament spool holder, a power button, and you can see that uh, actually the filament spool holder, the, the bracket itself, and the guide are actually printed on the printer. Um, they're actually plastic parts that were printed on an Up Mini. Uh, on the right side of the system, you'll see a power cable as well as a USB cable plugged in. That's a USB port, root port, and that's how you attach the printer to your laptop to uh, load up the up software and pull your model in. Uh, the platform temperature on the system is 50C for either ABS or PLA, and the extrusion temperature is 260-270C for ABS, 200C for PLA. Input file format that again syncs over that USB cable is STL, which is a common rep wrap file format that's fairly industry standard. There are other types of 3D file formats used on other printers, however. All right, here's a quick look at UPS version 1.17 of their production software. This is not actually where you would design a 3D model. You'd do that in some CAD software program. Uh, but here's where you can pull a model in, that standard STL file, and you can do things like rotate the model around, scale it in size, and actually go ahead and print it on the printer itself. Uh, you also can perform various maintenance functions with this software as well. All right, so here's the Up Mini in action, and we're printing the raft portion of the design right now. This is actually the base portion of the model that um, houses the, the model and sort of makes a platform for it to print on. Um, also, a nice feature about the Up Mini is its smart support feature that 
will print support structures in the model to keep it from warping and certainly there are varying degrees of warping with ABS or PLA plastic. Uh, PLA less prone to warping than ABS. And here's the Upmini in action as it nears completion for the print of our Empire State Building 3D model that we'll be using for test sample across all of the machines you see here today. And here we have the Cube 3D 3D printer from 3D Systems. And this printer is capable of building a little bit larger object, actual max creation size of five and a half inches cubed on its printer bed. Uh, the printer itself measures 10 by 10 by 13 inches tall, weighs nine and a half pounds, and is capable of connecting via 802.11bg wireless or you can insert a USB stick and transfer your print files that way. It is a single jet printer. It also prints in ABS plastic and is capable of 250 micron or 0.25 millimeters uh, layer thickness. So pretty fine pitch there as well and also runs uh, its own software, Cubify Client, runs on 32 and 64-bit operating systems, Windows, what have you. Now with the Cube 3D, 3D Systems includes a couple of things in the bundle. You get a tube of cube glue, which you'll actually use to dress the print bed of the system, which is right here, and that's removable. It's magnetized and keyed and snaps into place nice and clean with pretty good precision and alignment here in the printer so it's always set up nice. That cube glue allows you to remove your model without tearing any layers. It sets up a nice surface on top of the print bed. Now you also get a USB stick that you can transfer files to and from the printer from say your notebook or your desktop and an AC adapter is included as well and that powers the system and incidentally the Up Mini also includes an AC adapter power brick very much uh, this uh, same size. And the Cube 3D also has an LCD touchscreen right here, which you can perform some basic print and setup functions on uh, for controlling the printer. Now you may have noticed that the Cube 3D has a print cartridge, which is actually where the filament, the ABS plastic filament resides. And as you can see on the bottom here, there's a little contact area that makes a connection with the printer itself and tells it that it can feed the plastic through the print head. Um, now, 3D Systems sells these cartridges for $50 each or a three pack for $140. So they're looking to make a little money on the plastic material here, obviously. And it is a little bit more expensive than the average spool of ABS plastic that you can get on the open market. All right, here we are running the Cubify client software package that comes with the Cube 3D. It's a fairly straightforward package, nice user interface, but it's a bit more stripped down and basic perhaps than what you get with the Up Mini. This package will take a standard STL file format and import it into Cube format or Cube file format. But as you can see here, we're manipulating our model and it does a nice job of giving you the ability to work with uh, 3D models in general. Now, 3D Systems also has a nice website that um, at cubify.com, they offer some models for use and you can either purchase them or with the purchase of a printer, you get 25 free models in the package. Now the Cube 3D retails for $12.99. So it is significantly more expensive than the Up Mini. Uh, on the flip side, you do get a five and a half inch larger print bed versus 4.7 in the Up Mini. And the printer is easier to set up, to level the print bed and, and set up the printer in general. It's just much more user-friendly with the Cube 3D. And here we are printing our Empire State Building model. As you can see, we're getting close to about half of the build. On the left there is the Up Mini uh, version of that model. And finally, this is the Solidoodle 2. Solidoodle has a very traditional 3D printer design approach with a boxy sheet metal frame and simple construction. You could say it's very much in keeping with the original RepRap design philosophy of open sourced based self-replicating machines. A no frills version sells for $4.99 without the exterior metal casing or plexiglass door that you see here. For $5.99, however, you can get the pro version which gets you a heated build platform right here as well as an upgraded power supply. Now we'd highly suggest the heated build platform because it certainly helps minimize warping at the bottom layers of your builds. And for $6.99, you get the expert model which is actually what you're looking at here with with the exterior metal casing as well as that plexiglass door. And uh, all solid doodles come assembled with, uh, from the factory with a 0.3 ounce roll of starter filament, which is enough for one very small build, along with the AC power adapter and a USB cable. And that is the only way you communicate with the unit is over USB. The Solid Doodle 2 has a six by six by six 
build platform. However, SolidDoodle also has recently released the SolidDoodle 3, which increases that size to 8 inches cubed. So if you want to build some really large models, SolidDoodle 3 might be the the printer to look into. All solid doodles are fused filament based printers that work with either ABS or PLA, although ABS is recommended. Solid Doodle 2 has a RepRap version 1.3A electronics engine as well as a single nichochrome powered extruder and it weighs about 17 pounds. The system is 11 and a half inches long by 11.75 uh, inches wide and 11.75 inches high. In terms of precision, the Solid Little 2 can print down to 0.1 millimeter layer heights with 0.3 millimeter suggested for typical printing. As always, the finer the build pitch, generally the slower your prints will go. And here we are on the back side of the Solid Doodle 2. As you can see, this is your control board and all the connections that are going into the print bed and print head area. USB root port right there. You plug a USB cable in. Power cable here wraps around, as you can see, to the AC adapter. And uh, cable management uh, sort of set up via conductive tape, if you will. So <laughs> sort of a homegrown feel to the Solid Doodle 2, to be sure. And uh, here is your filament spool holder which is a bit of PVC uh, piping believe it or not but it gets the job done and uh works quite well, we might add. Now the Solid Doodle 2 works with some of the open source 3D printer packages that are available online, but Solid Doodle recommends the Repetier printer interface package that you see here. It's definitely not as user-friendly or perhaps as intuitive as the Cubify software for the Cube 3D, but if you really want to dig in deep and learn about 3D printing, this software is definitely for the power user and gives you access to all the knobs and dials. Here we are in the G-Code editor interface, and as you can see, we can rotate our model here. Uh, we can switch over to the manual control tab, and now you've got access to settings like uh, turning on the heater for the extruder or heat for the print bed. You've got temperature settings for both, and of course, you can manipulate the print bed itself in the Z-axis direction or the print head in the X and Y axis. So lots of different controls, lots of different features, and a very powerful package for the Solid Doodle 2 printer. And here's the Solid Doodle 2 in action, building our Empire State Building model. The structure is a little bit challenging to print in that it's comprised of rather tight dimensions in some areas. Uh, it's actually a good test vehicle for our printers and their capabilities as a result. It took us quite a bit of tweaking to get the Solid Doodle 2 to print this design cleanly, primarily because we were new to 3D printing here at Hot Hardware and dialing in the setup and software with the Solid Doodle 2 is much more intricate than the pre-configured approach that Cube 3D or the Up Mini take. On the flip side, the Solid Doodle 2 is technically more capable of higher precision prints down to 0.1 millimeter or 100 micron if you have the time and know-how to set it up, that is. All right, so wrapping things up here, I did want to take a second to thank my son, Michael, for his efforts with this 3D printer roundup. Michael has been fascinated by the technology for some time now, and he was absolutely my technical guru and go-to when it came to setting these machines up, learning how they run, and learning about 3D printing technologies in general. So thanks very much, buddy. I couldn't have done it without you. What you're looking at here, folks, really is an entry-level mid-range and a high-end offering in the consumer 3D printer market today. The Cube 3D here in the middle offers a super easy setup and quick printing, but it's perhaps not as tweakable when it comes to altering print settings and the like. It's also the most expensive printer of the bunch, starting at $12.99, and consumables are a bit more expensive with the Cube as well, with the custom cartridge approach for that ABS material. Again, however, we can't emphasize enough how easy it is to work with, and it does have a reasonably large print bed at five and a half inches cubed. Our middle child of the bunch, the Up Mini, offers a bit more tweakability and it also uh, retails uh, at a more mid-range price at $8.99 and uses standard bulk ABS plastic filament that you can get on the market, so lower consumable cost as well. The up is also fairly easy to set up and it does have good documentation. The print bed was a little tricky once in a while to get that leveled for us, but it's also the smallest print bed of the group, smallest creation size at uh, 4.7 inches cubed for the max creation size in that machine. And last but certainly not least is the Solid Doodle 2. Solid Doodle offers the largest print bed of the group at six inches cubed, and it's also the most configurable with its support for that standard open source Repetier host software. However, it can be tricky to set up for the novice user, and it often took us 
multiple attempts to get a quality print from the machine. At a base price of $4.99, however, it's also the lowest cost printer of the bunch. And if you really want to roll up your sleeves and tinker, you can achieve tight layer heights down to 0.1 millimeter or 100 micron with this machine. Solid Doodle is also shipping the Solid Doodle 3 now, which again takes the print bed size up to 8 inches cubed max creation size. Well, that about wraps up our quick tour of these 3D printers here today. Make sure you stop by Hot Hardware for the full review and showcase. I'm Dave Altavilla for HotHardware.com. Thanks for stopping by.